Praise be Jesus Christ, Ave Maria, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today is the feast day of the great Carmelite saint and mystic, St. Mary Magdalene de Pazzi. St. Mary Magdalene de Pazzi died in the 17th century. She was from a wealthy Florentine family. She was well known for her mystical ecstasies and for her embracing of a great amount of suffering. In fact, St. Mary Magdalene de Pazzi underwent such exorbitant varieties of suffering and she would seek these out, including rolling on nails, flagellating herself with a crown of thorns, stripping naked to undergo hot wax, uh, licking diseased wounds of people with leprosy. It is said that when she died in her bed, she suffered for many days. Her gums were so diseased that her teeth fell out one by one. And so because of this, some scholars have speculated that St. Mary Magdalene de Pazzi, uh, in addition to her great sanctity, suffered from different types of mental illness. And someone might balk at that and say, now hold on, this is a great saint that we're talking about. How can you suggest that she suffered with mental illness? We must remember when we're dealing with the psyche, which comes from the Greek word for soul, we're dealing with the human who is in himself very nearly inexplicable. Created in the image of God, the human is hylomorphic, a composite of body and soul according to the Aristotelian uh, anthropology. And so the human is close to divine. The human is somewhere just beneath angelic on the hierarchy of being, but the human is exalted to a degree which an, an angel cannot comprehend because of the incarnation. But humans also suffer from original sin and from living in a fallen world. We come into the world uh, suffering from original sin. This is washed away, God willing, in baptism. And we combat concupiscence throughout our life. Hopefully, God willing, a life of sacraments and prayer and drawing closer to Christ through the Holy Spirit. Jesus Christ is God made flesh. He is our signpost, our symbol, and our way. He gives us the grace necessary to live a good, holy life and to, God willing, reach the beatific vision one day. Humankind is exalted in the sacred humanity of Jesus Christ, but we are also struggle daily, every minute of every day, with the curse of the flesh of Adam. Even though our great father Adam is now in heaven interceding for us, we still live with the effects of his sin, which by the way is a good lesson about the temporal effects of sin. For those who question the church's teaching uh, uh, concerning sacrament of confession and purgatory and what temporal sin is, but that's perhaps for another day. The human being, let's just say, is a labyrinth that is wonderfully constructed, but it really takes the mind of God to peer through the depths of the human psyche and see it for what it is in totality. This is why some of the great mystic saints like St. Teresa of Jesus, the great mother of the discalced Carmelites, talks about the interior castle and, and coming to the interior of the heart to find Christ upon the throne because it really takes a kind of introspection to reach Jesus Christ in the soul of one who is elect. All that being said, the human person, even the elect, even the saint, is a mystery. As God is the great ineffable mystery, we are made in the image of God and so we are a mystery. So Saint Mary Magdalene seems to have suffered from mental illness and in that she found a pathway to sanctity. Where did the mental illness end and where did the graces of suffering with the crucified one begin? Can we really delineate these? We can look at other saints and keeping with the Carmelite theme, we look at St. Therese of the Child Jesus and the Holy Face and her father, Louis Martin, both suffered from mental illness, it seems. Uh, Louis, at the end of his life, seems to have offered himself to God as a victim soul for his daughters who had entered the convent. 
And we know that St. Therese made an offering of herself as a victim soul. In fact, at the end of her life, her suffering was so great that she contemplated suicide. She wondered how atheists don't kill themselves whenever they experience suffering because her suffering was so great that she considered taking her own life. And that in and of itself is mental illness. Contemplating suicide is by definition a kind of mental illness because what is the number one impulse of a human, a healthy human in this life? It's to survive, it's to keep on living. If you're contemplating suicide, you're suffering from mental illness. And so we live in a world where we're so used to delineating bulimia, from schizophrenia, from you name it, these kinds of, from depression, different mental illnesses. But it's difficult in the individual soul to delineate these different things because every soul is unique, like a snowflake, it's different. And so we can find characteristics because we all have a human nature, but we don't wanna too finely separate the human person body from the human soul, from the natural life, from the spiritual life. Because of the incarnation, nature and supernature have interpenetrated. And because of our nature, because of who we are as humans, as hylomorphic beings, body and soul, we can't really make too fine a distinction. Now we can diagnose mental illness and we can treat it. There are good ways to treat mental illness. And I think there are bad ways to treat mental illness. Sometimes people who are very religious may be inclined to dismiss mental illness and just say, well, that's a fabrication. It's just purely someone's personal sin. Or maybe it's demonic activity. That's not to say that those things don't play a role, but mental illness is real. And it is difficult to define where the mental illness ends and perhaps the spiritual suffering begins. This is why people who do not have a spiritual life, who do not have a spiritual pathway to trod, really truly suffer with mental illness and have no balm for it. There really is no relief from it, which is evident because we do see very many sadly, tragically, take their life by suicide or have their lives wasted away by mental illness. So I thought I'd say a few words about St. Mary Magdalene de Pazzi on her feast day. May she pray for us. But she's a great sign, uh, not only for people suffering with mental illness, um, but for women suffering with mental illness, uh, for religious suffering with mental illness, and for those who may think that their mental illness is only a curse or is unrelated to their spiritual life, we can look at St. Mary Magdalene de Pazzo, we can look at St. Therese, St. Louis Martin, and see how God, in a kind of way, gave them this mental illness. We can look at it as a cross which they bore to the glory of God. So if you are suffering from mental illness, definitely seek help. It's good to have these things diagnosed, but don't think that this has to be separated from your spiritual life. And don't think that this has to defeat you so that you cannot advance in the spiritual life. You can and will advance in the spiritual life if you follow Christ in the Holy Spirit. Not in spite of your mental illness, but even maybe because of it. That's not to say that we don't seek treatment, that it's not a cross because it is. But mental illness, just like personal, physical handicap, all of these things um, are ways that we can unite ourselves to the crucified one to gain heaven through the grace of Jesus Christ. So St. Mary Magdalene de Pazze, pray for us in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. One, two, three, four. I got feelings for you, and they won't quit. I got feelings for you. Tell me the truth, girl. Does it feel like we could fall in love?
for you.